Well, maybe you, you think that you get the kind of thing, oh, what this is, from the appearances. Well, no, because not all things of this kind have these colors. Right, remember, I changed the colors, and you still think it's that kind of thing. Uh, and there's different examples of this thing that don't have these colors at all. Uh, maybe you think you get the uh, uh, composition of it from your sensory information. Well, no, you don't get that either, right? <clears throat> After all, um, not everything has these colors. And, and like I said, I changed the colors, right? Like, not only can I change the colors and same composition, but uh, I, you know, not everything with these colors is composed, has that kind of thing, right? Not everything with these colors is of that sort of composition, right? These colors come in a wide variety of mediums. <laughs> I, really, the you know, the main, main thing you need to learn here is that you don't get anything of the reality of the table from the appearances. That's something you comprehend. That's something you interpret. Okay, right? But you don't get anything of the reality of the thing for, from the appearances. And if you want like a knockdown argument for this, it's like, okay, fine. You think you've been talking about a table, but this entire time you've been looking at a screen. You haven't looked at a table at all. Just appearances. So here's kind of the really scary upshot of all this. This is probably <laughs> the disturbing full implication of Russell's view. Right? Now Russell's just fully willing to say, right? He's willing to acquiesce to this. He doesn't want to argue the point. Reality in some way causes our perceptions, right? He doesn't want to argue that point. He's going to basically grant that there is a reality and that we have perceptions. And there's a causal interaction from reality to our perceptions. Okay, but here's basically what that breakdown is, right? You know, think about this thing again. <laughs> and I, I kept saying, well, you know, what are, the, what are its colors? Well, you know, technically speaking, the color is not in the thing, right? The color is not in the thing. The thing causes the colors, but it's not in the thing. I mean, what's out here are, are objects, right? This is what exists out in the world, according to our best of our physics. What's out here are objects, and there's electromagnetic radiation. Electromagnetic radiation strikes the objects. Some of it's absorbed, some of it's reflected off, okay? What's reflected off travels to our eye, passes through the cornea, strikes the optic nerve through a chemical reaction, which we don't understand, which sends a signal down the optic nerve, through our spine, to the back of the head, right back here, through another chemical reaction, which we don't understand, which causes the sensation we call color. So in this case, something like brown. And even that description isn't technically accurate with what's happening here, because what's happening here is, um, yeah, I don't know, <laughs> the engineers out there would be able to explain what's happening with a screen better than I can, but somehow there's a substance that's excited by electricity in the screen, which causes a certain wavelength of electromagnetic radiation to emanate from the screen. So it's not even reflecting at this point, right? It's just emanating, which passes through your cornea, strikes the optic nerve, chemical reaction we don't understand, along the spine, back here, chemical reaction we don't understand, causes a sensation color, right? That's where color exists. Color doesn't exist out there. It only exists right back here. So you have that old, question, if a tree falls in the forest, does it make a sound? Well, no, it doesn't. Sound exists right back here. What's out here are, you know, so in this case, right, my vocal cords are vibrating, are vibrating and, and causing concussive waves of air molecules. Those concussive waves of air molecules travel to the ear canal, strike uh, the eardrum, which interacts with the optic nerve with the chemical reaction, which you don't understand, sends a signal uh, to the back of the brain with another chemical reaction, which we don't understand, which causes sound. And even in this case, you're watching this video, you're not near my vocal cords right now. You are displaced through space and time. Right now there's a speaker that's causing the vibrations. 
So even at this point, you are not hearing my voice. You are hearing a speaker. So reality causes all of this. But causes are distinct from their effects. Color doesn't exist out here. Color only exists right back here. Right now you're looking at screens. I see a wall. I see a guitar. I see a person. No, you don't. You see a screen, which is mimicking certain colors or producing certain colors, which you interpret as a person. I hear Professor Haugen. No, you don't. You hear a speaker. You hear a speaker. What you, what you are attributing to a reality right now isn't even caused by that reality. It's caused by a speaker and a screen, not by me. I mean, there's a causal chain, but I'm not in front of you. Hmm? So this is the point that Russell is trying to make. Reality causes appearances. But causes are distinct from their effects. Now, this has a really weird implication. Hmm? You think colors are in the thing. They're not in the thing. There's no brown in that guitar. There's wood, but no brown. Brown exists right back here. There's no sound in the guitar. The sound's right back here. That's where the sound is. So all of our appearances do not exist in the objects around us. They're caused by the objects around us, but they do not exist in the objects around us. That means whatever this is, it's not what it looks like.